This is the TSC installation for your 1500MX. Before you start this installation, you must make sure that your 1500MX has the flood cooling kit installed. Without that, this won't work. Make sure to go to Tormach.com to download the 1500MX operator manual, which contains the instructions for the through spindle coolant. Make sure to read all the warnings and cautions before you proceed. To perform this installation, you will need a 3mm, 4mm, and 5mm hex wrench, a 13mm open end wrench, a 5 16 inch wrench, an adjustable wrench, a flat blade screwdriver, a number 2 Phillips screwdriver, side cutters, a ladder, and finally an engine hoist with two 500 pound straps or a chain with a center hook. The TSC pump is around 400 pounds, so it would be safest if you use an engine hoist to remove it from the shipping pallet. Attach the straps to the lifting rings and lift it above the top of the pallet. One side is heavier than the other, so a co-worker should guide it. Remove the pallet and slowly guide it down. The rest of the TSC kit is inside the separate shipping box. Remove all the contents to make sure none are missing. Contact tech support if anything is missing. So it's easy to remove the covers. You should lower the spindle down in Z using the page down button. At this point you have to e-stop the machine. Start by selecting exit, e-stop the mill, wait for path pilot to say it's safe to turn off the power, then turn off power at the switch. Disconnect the shop air supply. Install the coolant pickup and filter. The TSC pump is installed in the right hole as you are standing behind the mill. Use a 3mm hex wrench to remove the four M5 screws, securing the cover plate. Find the coolant pickup assembly included in the TSC kit. Use a 5 16 inch wrench to remove the four bolts and screws, securing the assembly together. Place a basket into the coolant tank hole. Then place the coolant pickup filter section on top with the opening flap toward the mill and secure with either the assembly screws or the M5 screws you removed earlier. Find the coolant filter assembly and the four M5 screws included with the kit. Use a 3mm hex wrench to install the filter assembly onto the coolant tank with the inlet of the filter pointing towards the pickup assembly. Identify the shortest PVC hose included in the kit. Use two one and a quarter hose clamps to connect one end of the hose to the barb fitting on the pickup assembly and the other end to the inlet of the filter assembly. Find the long piece of three quarter inch ID PVC hose. Use two one and a quarter inch hose clamps to connect one end of the hose to the inlet of the TSC pump and the other end to the barb fitting on the outlet of the filter assembly. Find the half inch ID PVC hose. Use a one inch hose clamp to connect one end of the hose to the barb fitting on the TSC pump labeled pressure relief. With the free end of the hose, insert it into the slot on the top of the coolant pickup assembly. Then secure it to the vertical tab with two zip ties. Install the rotary union. Use a 4mm hex wrench to remove the M6 screws securing the right side of the panel of the spindle head cover. Use a ladder to remove the screws on the top. Two of the screws on the bottom are on slots, so just loosen them and remove the others. Pull the right panel out of the enclosure and set it aside. Set all of these screws aside as you will reuse them all. On the left side panel, you will only need to remove the screws along the front edge that are attached to the front panel. You will also need to remove the screws on the top. While you are there, you can remove the screws on the top of the front panel. Before you remove the rest of the screws on the front panel, you have to snip out the zip ties holding the front drawbar cable along the inside of this panel. Then remove the screws along the bottom front edge and lower the panel slightly so you can access the cable along the top left. Snip the zip tie holding it in place. 
then you have to remove the front spindle button cable. Press in the connector's latch to slide it off of the drawbar button. Remove the front cover from the enclosure and set it aside. Remove the retaining cap off of the drawbar solenoid. This solenoid can dangle there, but you should temporarily replace the cap so you don't lose it. Use a 10 millimeter hex key to remove the four socket head cap screws that secure the power drawbar to its mounting plate. Set these socket head cap screws aside. Press down on the push to connect fitting and disconnect the airline. Lift the power drawbar up and away from the mounting plate, being careful not to yank on the cables. Then set it aside. Identify the piece of one quarter inch OD tubing included in the kit. Insert one end of the tube into the PTC fitting on the rotary union. Orient the rotary union so that the fittings are pointed towards the rear of the machine. Thread the rotary union into the top of the spindle. Note that it has a left hand thread. Then tighten with two wrenches. To reinstall the power drawbar, align the slot of the PDB extension with the fittings of the rotary union. Then re-secure the power drawbar to the mounting plate with its original socket head cap screws. Reinstall the solenoid and secure it with its original retaining cap. Resecure the airline onto the power drawbar's push to connect fitting and make sure it's well secured. Install the high pressure hose. The TSC high pressure hose needs to go through the energy chain. You will need to remove quite a few of the energy chain's retaining covers. To do this, use a flat blade screwdriver along the edge of one side and gently pry it up. Then do the same on the other side. Lift off the cover and set it aside. Continue down the energy chain and remove as many as you see fit. We were able to leave about half of the covers on the top section and run the hose through that. As you go along the bottom, you'll have to lift up on the energy chain around the electrical connection cover to pry up the plastic covers. Pull out more of the hose so that you can then curve it and start nesting into the bottom half of the energy chain. Continue pulling the hose until the bottom half reaches the pump on the floor. Take the loose end and pass it through the opening on the top right of the spindle and towards the rotary union. Attach this end to the rotary union and tighten with an open end wrench. You may want to use a second wrench to hold the rotary union's extension in place as you tighten the hose nut. The cable channel at the top of the spindle head cover has some cables secured with zip ties. Snip off the front zip tie and resecure that cable and the high pressure hose to the channel with a new zip tie. At the rear, adjust the hose so that it matches the length of the cables going through the energy chain. Secure them all together with two large zip ties. Make sure that the hose and all the cables inside the energy chain are arranged well. Then start replacing all the energy chain covers by snapping them back into place along the top and bottom. Bring the front cover back into the enclosure and reattach the drawbar button connector. Align the front cover to the top and re-secure the screws along the bottom, side and top. Re-secure the cables along both sides of the front cover with zip ties. Place the OD tubing into the gap in the corner of the front panel. The tubing should stick out just a little bit. Secure the tubing to the two oblong holes on the front panel using two zip ties. Bring the right spindle cover back into the enclosure and make sure the rear slides into the channel at the back. Resecure all the cables along the bottom sides and top. At the rear of the machine are two threaded inserts. Install the two standoffs into these and tighten with a 13 millimeter wrench. Align the hose bracket and secure with the two cap head screws. Tighten them in place with the 5mm hex wrench. Rest the high pressure hose onto the bracket and secure with two large zip ties. Remove the cap from the TSC pump outlet and attach a high pressure hose. Tighten it in place with an adjustable wrench. Connect the TC control cables. Run the two electrical cables up the hose towards the electrical cabinet and secure with zip ties to keep them off the floor. 
At the side of the electrical cabinet, align the cable labeled TSC sensor to the connector and secure it in place. On the underside of the cabinet, align the TSC control cable to the TSC control input and secure it into place. Once all these are done, go through your install and make sure that all the cables are bundled neatly. And make sure to zip tie the coolant hoses along the edge of the coolant tank. Then double check that all the hose clamps are securely tightened. You don't want to have one of these come loose when running your 1500 MX. They're all under high pressure. The clear hoses are not under high pressure, so these can just be tightened snugly. The kit also comes with a wrench for the coolant pickup assembly. To replace the filter, slide the wrench onto the filter reservoir from the bottom and then screw it from the mount. Keep the reservoir in place as you wiggle the filter off the assembly. Remove both, then slide the new filter into the reservoir and align with the pickup assembly. Wiggle the new filter back on and retighten the filter reservoir with the wrench. That's it for the installation procedure. Follow the directions inside your instructions for the operating procedure.